Hi guys, welcome to the Young Economist YouTube channel. How do you derive the LM curve? This is what we'll be considering today. So if you're here for the very first time, don't forget to subscribe to this channel because on a regular basis, I'll definitely be posting some useful tips on how you can uh, solve issues to do with economics. And economics could be microeconomics or it could be macroeconomics. Okay, so let's get started. I don't want to take much of your time. Okay, so the LM curve, the LM curve is um, quite interesting because this is a curve that gives you the combination of interest rates and output in which the money market is in equilibrium, all right? So unlike the IS curve, we saw that uh, the combination will be, will be interest rates and output, except that it only gives you uh, equilibrium in the goods market okay so the lm curve is denoted as liquidity preference okay and as you see in this lecture there are different reasons why this curve will shift okay so the the equation which i would want you guys to realize is that money supply is equivalent to money demand, okay? So this is something that uh, is the key principle behind the LM curve. But this is also equivalent to liquidity, which is uh, determined by interest rates and uh, income and output rather okay so in essence the real money supply which is denoted as m will be equal to this equation here the function of interest rates and output okay so this is essential for you to to remember guys so the question is, why does why is the LM curve positively sloped? So the reason is that um, you usually what happens in this case is we we'll just undergo what is known as differentiation. Okay, so we'll differentiate this equation. We'll call it equ equation one. Okay, that's equation one. So differentiate M. And I forgot to mention that actually there are some key assumptions as respect to interest rates and ink and output. So now what happens here is that you have that L differentiate R plus L differentiate Y. Okay. So now what normally happens is that you want to do things as respect to any changes in um, the income. Okay. So the next step you are going to do is actually divide this whole equation by y because what you are just trying to know you, you want to determine the slope of the curve so what you do exactly is um uh, you, you just simply divide everything by by changing y really okay Okay, I hope you are getting this 
I hope it's uh, I hope you're understanding this guys all right so now what it is is that um, uh, the central bank because you know real money supply is really determined by the central bank of a country so because of that it's an exogenous variable and it's not affected by any changes in in the output so really because of that what is assumed is that this function this result is actually equal to zero so what that means is that zero is equivalent to l r d r over d y plus L Y over D okay that's D Y okay I like to call it D but it's changing Y sorry about that guys it's actually changing Y but it looks like a D so I always say D but it's not D it's changing Y so you know you what you do now is that you cancel that and the next thing is that you are left with this equation, which I'm calling equation two. Okay, I'm calling this equation two. So now the next step is to, because this is the case where you have uh, L R change in R over change in Y plus L Y. So because of that, you, you want to really, our target is to find this guy here. We want to determine, we want to determine D R D Y, which is this. So that is our target really. So to do that, we, we take, we take L, uh, L Y to the left. Okay. Take L Y to the left, and then uh, what you are left with is L R equals to uh, D R D D Y. Okay. Okay. So now the the assumption is that. Ly, if you if you read your notes, I'm sure you've read your, those notes before, but if you are totally new, please do this, do your own research, because I also want to mention that I'm the young economist, so I'm kind of young in this. The people who are fully grounded in economics are the professors, the doctors, but I'm young, and what I give you is actually the basics, but I'm sure you can take time to research. So the assumption is that LY is greater than zero, okay? Then LR is less than zero, okay? So what this means is that this equation, what this means is LY, is positive then LR is negative okay so the final product that you get because this is positive positive times negative is negative negative divided by negative it's obviously positive so because of that this the change in interest rates divide by the change in output is actually positive so that is the slope okay that's the slope it's positive so what this means is that because it is positive because it's positive what this means is that the lm curve is positively sloped. 
okay that is what it means so in essence what we are saying is that the lm curve at equilibrium is positively sloped and shifts in the lm curve will be determined by the the decisions that are made by the central bank okay so now this is in a closed economy guys so that is one thing you need to remember this is in a closed economy we've not yet factored in aspects to do with a country able to being able to trade with the outside world no we've not factored that in okay so now when we have the IS and LM curve together, once we have the LM curve, and IS curve together, you are going to see that both these curves at their in intersection point give us an equilibrium okay so that but this equilibrium is internal internal okay it's the internal equilibrium for the for the country since it's a closed economy all right so now the question is what causes this lm curve to 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 shift so the LM curve will shift to the right if there's an expansionary monetary policy. So when we say expansionary monetary policy, policy, the central bank will make a decision to increase uh, supply of money. So what this does is that it's going to shift the LM curve to the right and your interest rates will fall, but outputs will increase. Okay? And if uh, money supply is reduced, real money supply is reduced, the reverse effect will happen. So that's one thing you have to, to take note of. So it, it fully agrees with our equation, this equation here, change in interest rates and income. Okay, so as you can see, uh, you'll find that uh, the LM curve will shift to the right during the expansionary monetary policy regime and also shift to the left if there's a restrictive uh, monetary policy. So at this point, uh, I would like to end here and I sure hope you really enjoyed this short lecture. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel in case you have any questions. I've been your host, The Young Economist, and take care.